Britain is going through the biggest rise in the cost of living for a generation, and it's affecting millions of us. I would say the past four months now, it's, uh, it's got really hard. I don't sleep, I get about three or four hours. Soaring costs are causing some people to make agonising decisions, food for their families or fuel to heat their homes. How are we going to be able to afford to pay gas bills and electric bills when we're not making the money to do it? We've met those who say the rising cost of living is seriously impacting their mental health. I've literally been on suicidal thoughts and I'm just thinking I don't have money for this. Oh, God. For some, the stress is overwhelming. When the food runs out, what I've got, and it gets even worse because I just go hungry. For others, it's about survival. It's just so hard having to get up every day and put a brave face on things when all I'm doing on the inside is just falling apart. I don't want to be here anymore. That, that's honestly how I feel. I just, I've just had enough of life. I can't take it anymore. I can't take cost of living anymore. It's just too expensive. Ready? One, two, three, go! <laughs> Nathaniel, where did yours go? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll try it again. Selena Walker and her family are finding new ways to spend their time. Well, the best thing about it is you can come down with the kids. You don't have to pay for anything, even if you just make some sarnies and stuff. So it's just you can a literally free yeah. day out. Clean the, you get a free water swimming pool right here. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit cold, but it's all right. I wonder if the dolphins are up there today. From the Sky News Centre at 11. The average cost of a full tank of petrols hit £100 for the first time. Figures show Selena's finding the rising cost of living more and more difficult to manage. Yeah, it was one of the cheapest petrol stations. It was 174 And now it's And then one, today it's yeah. 180 22 litres. I'd say five days. Five days max. Petrol's really expensive now, and if it goes up any more, I think we'll have to start using the bus. Six months ago, Selena was spending £25 a week on gas and electric. Now she's spending £40 a week. That's an extra £800 a year that she can't afford. We've always managed and lived all right until lately. And the main thing I'm worried about now is obviously Christmas and especially if that fuel goes up again and there's £800. Pounds. I don't know what we're going to do. My depression has been up and down, where I've literally like been on suicidal like thoughts, and I'm just thinking I don't have money for this and I can't do this, and yeah, I get scared in case it goes that cold that we don't have like the gas or we can't pay the gas, and then the little ones are getting cold or they end up poorly, so that stresses us out as well. It's hard at the minute, is that? Do you feel that? Yeah. What does that feel like? It's like, I'm, like I'm, I feel really heavy. Like I can't breathe. Selena is in a unique position. She works as a support worker for Mental Health Concern, a national charity which provides specialist services on behalf of the NHS. She sees this crisis from both sides. We've got a lot of people that are coming back to the service that used to be with us before, so they're referring themselves back. A lot of them have got back on their feet and been in a good place, got the job, sorted everything out, and then the cost of living hit, and everyone's just fallen back down again. Morning, Matthew. It's just Selena calling from Together in a Crisis. You OK? Matthew's been referred to the charity because his anxiety has become more severe. In the last few months, rising bills have put him under greater stress. When was the last time you've eaten anything? Two days ago. All right. Doing the dishes, I just look at the outside world and thinking I would love to be out there. 
compared to what it used to be, where I used to have a life where I could go out, I used to knock about with all my friends and stuff like that. But now it just seems like I've got nobody and just feel all alone. And when you worry about money and bills and paying for food and stuff, that must just make your mental health... Uh, it sends it rot, it sends it rot, it, and to be honest, it goes through the roof. And I'm just worrying where the next meal's going to come from. Matthew wants to show us how bad his anxiety has become. Uh, I'm getting a bit on edge. The reason he's not eating is because he can't leave the house. Yeah, I think this is as far as I'm going to get at the minute. It's feeling really dizzy and anxious. I can obviously see it's shaking it's quite bad. Around 7 million people in Britain, like Matthew, suffer from a panic disorder that means they find it difficult to go outside. It's just so hard. And that's why I choose sometimes just like, when I feel like this all the time, I just can't seem to even do anything. It just spoiled, it has ruined my life compared to what I used to be. I used to be that happy, bubbly person just wanting to be out and about. I wish I could get back to that, but it's so hard to. Figures show the cost of living crisis led shoppers to tighten their belts last month. Retail sales dipped by more than 1%. A fifth of people on low incomes are up to three times more likely to develop mental health problems than wealthier families. We've just seen an awful rise in sort of people just coming to the service. What are that emotional support for people? We try and help them sort of sort out their finances, get the right support put in place, contact councils, food banks for them, and just try and get them sort of figured out and in the right place, really. But lately, there's a lot more that we're not able to do. We've seen clients who sort of, their suicidality has increased a lot related to sort of the worries that they've got about the future and not being able to cope at the moment. Hello. Hiya, Susan. It's just Selena calling from Together in a Crisis. Oh, hiya. We've received your referral form. Susan is described as being in crisis. Her mental health has declined to worrying levels and she's reaching out for help. So, like, I'm struggling financially because, like, I'm not getting much work. I actually can't afford to get the blinds. It's just newspaper up for now until I can afford it. Despite being a full-time carer, Susie is on low pay. And after all of her bills are paid, she says there's hardly anything left to live on. Some days I go without food at all. When I'm at work, I just I won't eat because I haven't got the money to go out and buy it. So what am I meant to do? How am I meant to live? How am I meant to survive? Like, I've lost um, three and a half stone since December. It's just so hard having to get up every day and put a brave face on things when all I'm doing on the inside is just falling apart. I don't want to be here anymore. That, that's honestly how I feel. I just don't want to be here anymore. I've had enough of life. I can't take it anymore. I can't take the, the, the cost of living anymore. It's just too expensive. I've even thought about suicide quite a few times. That's how bad it's got. That's how low my mental health is. That's how low my mood is. Billy Joe has been assigned Susie's case and they arranged to meet in a local park. I should be able to afford to be able to live comfortably and get my house sorted out and I can't even afford to do that. No. Do you enjoy your work? I love my work. You love your work, mm -hmm. so sort of care is where you yeah. want to be. I mean, I just feel like I'm constantly working to pay my bills. Yeah. 
And that's no kind of life. I shouldn't be living that life. I feel like I don't even know myself. Yeah. I don't, I'm lost. I don't, I don't know who I am anymore. What we can look at is hopefully alleviating a little bit of that pressure so you've got more time to do those things that you want to do to sort of discover yourself again, really, sort of figure out what you want, what you want to do and how you're going to do it. More than half of households in the UK have cut back on their energy use as a result of the cost of living crisis. The government says it's providing 8 million of the most vulnerable households with extra support this year. And all domestic electricity customers will receive at least £400. The government also says it'll spend an additional £2.3 billion a year by 2024 on mental health services. We're delivering things at a grassroots level. We're delivering things with the people on the street who actually need that help today. And unfortunately, it takes a long time for that funding to reach us, if at all. If we do not see funding increasing in line with the demand that we are seeing and the increased number of people accessing our services and how complex those people are, then yes, people will die. The government says it will help ease the pain of rising costs with a package of measures, but will it be enough? It's bad enough as it is now, but once you get to the winter months, there's going to be a lot of hungry and cold people out there. Can you afford to live? Not really. It's really hard at the moment, it really is. People keep saying to me, Susie, it's not a bad life, it's a bad day. No, it's not, it's a bad life. It's not a bad day, it's a bad life. When people say that to me, I'm like, live in my shoes, live my life, then tell me it's a bad day. Because I'll have bad days 24-7 for the past six months. It's been like this. I just... I've been trying to cling on to life. I've done well so far, but I'm, like, on the edge. Right on the edge. If you are affected by any of the issues raised in Nick's reporting, you can contact the Samaritans on 116 123 or email joe at samaritans.org.